Welcome to another edition of a great episode of Peace Pipe TV. We thank you all for being here. I'm sure, we're going to get a lot of people to tune in. We now this next guest, like I always say, they need no introduction because we always have big guests. Anybody on Peace Pipe TV is definitely a tremendous guest. Absolutely. Now this brother's a Morris brother. And he's here to drop a lot of science on you. I want y'all to listen to what he's saying, take out pens and papers. You know, of course, this is going to be a playback. So, you know, we want you guys to get a lot out of this because it's going to be a lot of information that he is going to give out. I mean, when he bring it, he bring it like nobody else. So without further ado, I would like to introduce a seer to Duque is my brother, the esteemed more. I would like to introduce, as I just said, his name, got to say it twice, a seer to Duque Tears. I don't think we brought him up, but there we go. Here we go. There you go. Delay. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody peace, brother. How are you? Peace. Thank you guys for having me on. Tatanka, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for um, inviting me on the platform. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. It's definitely good to have you here. So I would say we do this to all our guests. Um, we have you introduce yourself first. If you want to, you know, speak on your lineage, you could do that as well. We have everybody. You know, dude, that's like kind of customer. Right. Right. Um, well, for everybody who are uh, just coming into it or have not been familiar with me, uh, I go by, I say the Duke of Tears. Um, I've been in the pre-YouTube conscious community um, for over 25 years now. Um, bless everybody, all of the elders. Um, everybody that's come before us into now. And uh, I came into the game at a time where um, there was a lot of, um, it was a pre-transitional time. So like I was doing a lot of like uh, what people would perceive as or call like lectures or, or, or conscious information um, before there was a YouTube you know what I mean? Before the internet and all of that, when you actually had to go out and videotape stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all Absolutely. of that, uh, micro recorders, all that type of stuff. So, you know, I was around for all of it back before it, be before consciousness became a fad, before um, information was weaponized the way it is now, uh, before uh, information in the so-called community became click based, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, I've seen a lot coming and going, you know, as well as been privy enough to be around a lot of the, um, elders that came before us, you know, prior to them transitioning or unfortunately being forced out of the community. You know, a lot of that stuff happened too, mm -hmm. um, due to their political stances or lack of a political stance believe it or not you know so we definitely want to give honors to a lot of the people who put us in position to know certain things that we wouldn't have known in any other venue so i always bring it back to people like uh steve copley blessed dead if it was for him we wouldn't know about the boule uh mm -hmm. brother daoud breast the dead if it was for him we wouldn't know about a lot of the the underlying occultist elements to this stuff um, brother uh, Azazel or Azariah Bay, blessed dead. Mm -hmm. He was a heavy distributor of uh, conscious and occultic type information. Uh, Ivan Van Sertema, um, is so many people. Uh, uh, Renoko Rashidi, blessed dead. Brother Arnold, blessed dead. Brother Big Man. If it wasn't for no brother Big Man, it'd be no Sonetta TV. There would be none of that type of stuff. So, Facts. You know, we want to give him uh, definitely respect. Uh, the elder was an elder named Sister Bird. Uh, oh, I remember when I first came in the game, she had uh, went up to her crib in Buffalo, me and the queen, and she had a basement full from one side to the next of just all types of conscious tapes. You know what I'm saying? When they was on VHS, you know, people like John Henry Clark, Sheikh Ankta Diop, um, there's so many, you know, uh, Prince Uriel mm -hmm. Bay, bless the dead, one of the one of the giants in in what they would call more science or Aboriginal science. You know, a lot Absolutely. of the brothers 
really, and sisters, uh, Francis Crest Wilson, uh, Sister Shaharazad Ali, um, Jewel Pulkram, um, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, uh, Sister Barbara Tears, Buster Dad, who, who opened up the National Black Theater in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for her, a lot of lectures and stuff wouldn't have happened. Um, Delbert Blair, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, yeah. It's so many people I'll be striving strive to remember, you know. Um, so many people who who contributed to the the essence of what we all are are in some instances taken for granted now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These are a lot of the people who kept the torch going while everybody went the boule route, while everybody went the Freemason route, while everybody went the, the get money route, you know what I'm saying? Um there were a lot of people that kept it true, you know, and, and kept the the integrity of the movement going, even Absolutely. if it was on their own right back. On. Man. Yeah. So I definitely want to give respect. And it wasn't just like I said, I came up at a time where where it wasn't so so click based, so set tripping based. So it was more where mm -hmm. where it was more about the uh, knowledge. Indeed, where for right. members five percent was given a lecture, you'd have Five percent is there. You'd have Hebrews there. You'd have Moors there. You'd have American Indian people there. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be different people, and everybody giving themselves or everybody giving whoever's speaking the respect enough, even if they weren't necessarily consigned to that form of thinking. We still were in a communal base where everybody could be heard. Absolutely, and it wasn't based on who got the most likes who got the most clicks, like, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. knowledge and wisdom base. Indeed. Can on they, understanding. Can't forget him. C. Freeman L. Can't forget him. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people now. And this is before knowledge was like popular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> at that time, you know what I mean? Like most people was about getting money, was about creating rap music or whatever they could do to get on. Whereas those mm -hmm. of us that you know, came up in the era where we had to steal books from the library, where we had to, where we had to talk our way into clean rooms and different colleges to be able to see certain books, you know what I'm saying? And figure out ways mm -hmm. to get to smuggle the information out. You know what I mean? At a time, mm -hmm. they were still telling people that the Moors was white people and <laughs> the Indians was Siberians and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All this type of stuff. Like I watched us actually change that narrative to the point where you can't say Moors was white people in the phenotypical mm. sense. You might can say that they was white in terms of the caste system that was operating, but you can't never say that they was your, you know, Caucasians. It's like we deaded all of that. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't just Moors in that in that vein doing that. It was all of us that came together prior to the debate culture prior to the knowledge based click culture that we find ourselves in now like we was really moving this upward and it was almost like a crescendo up until 2008 when they put barry in office mm -hmm. after that it was a wrap <laughs> now do you now do you feel like um these groups were infiltrated yeah absolutely um but some of these groups, unfortunately, were established through infiltration from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what you would have is you would have people in earnest, like the black, like the so-called Black Panthers, for instance. They, like when you talk about, when I, when I think about the Black Panthers, right, I don't think about, well, it's not true. I think about Huey Newton and stuff, but I think about the ones that they don't never talk to you about, mm -hmm. Fred Hampton. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of Carter, Sundiata, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Um, the ones that was really putting in that work to the point that by the time they realized. It's sad that I'm. Sorry, I'm sorry. Say again. I'm sorry. It's sad, that it's, it's sad that a lot of people don't understand exactly what those types of organizations were actually about and what they were really trying to do. Those that weren't in the mainstream, those people who weren't out there doing it for the cloud or to be seen or recording uh -huh. what they were doing, there were actual organization groups and people out there 
who were for the people, working with the people in the communities and things of that nature. They were really mm -hmm. about the people. And by the time they stopped mm -hmm. to take stock of what they were doing and then turned around and realized, oh, half these niggas is, is the police. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. a lot of stuff actually started to decline from that point, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is what broke the movement. That's what disheartened the movement in that sense that you had a lot of people who were really dedicated, you know, and then wind up finding out that the chairman was actually an agent or the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The person responsible for their security was, you know, CIA or whatever. So when, when Hoover came out, Hoover, who was another melanated man passing, you know what I'm saying? Who also was Moorish, uh, adjacent, right? Uh, when he said that their whole goal was to stop the rise of the black Messiah or to create their own, we don't understand how poignant that was in their modus operandi in terms mm -hmm. of few, being able to control movements and their future progression mm -hmm. from being able to write the narrative of the hero. You see what I'm saying? Within that, within that media. And so like we, they created their own Messiah. Yeah, they, they mm -hmm. literally said, well, if we can't control it, then we'll create our own. And then when the real ones pop up, we can dead that and we can keep everybody focusing on our version of it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. may be, which is usually based upon some sort of financial aptitude, you see? So in this mm -hmm. vein, people like Jay-Z are accepted. People like Diddy is accepted. People mm -hmm. like Tyler Perry is accepted. People like Sharpton is accepted. You see what I'm saying? because they have what most Negroes like, which is money. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it, so money becomes the, the basis of the so-called revolution. When Absolutely. the revolution was at one point antithesis to money. Absolutely, hold on for one second. Mm -hmm. That's this brother's um, information here, his cash app is there. Show some love to the person that's bringing the information. Thank so you, really appreciate it. I'm well, sure he I would appreciate, appreciate that. And we have to support people that look like ourselves. It helps. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, and of that's, that's the issue. The issue is we are now in an era where the so-called revolution has been televised to such a degree that we don't even accept people giving us knowledge unless they have a certain mm -hmm. amount of followers behind them. Mm -hmm. You understand? So in an era like that, you understand the whole revolution is then contingent upon artificial artifices like TikTok, like Instagram, like, you understand? Um, the mm -hmm. new activism is not you going out in the world doing shit, it's you going into the social media world, right? The metaverse doing stuff. Mm -hmm. so, and then once you get endorsed by enough people for what you're doing, then you can get endorsed by the same corporations, right? That mm -hmm. are an antithesis to any type of revolutionary ideology. Because mm -hmm. even our most fervent revolutionaries were corporate sponsored. <laughs> you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Like, like it's just certain facts that we don't take into account, like the fact that organizations like for instance uh in the noi right they were and maybe still are were funded by hl hunt right you know, from the hunt's ketchup family which mm -hmm. then ties them into mm -hmm. Hines, which is the kerry family because john kerry married into the Hines family Hines mm -hmm. ketchup so mm -hmm. you have the whole nation of islam being supported by hl hunt <laughs> you understand what i'm saying <laughs> Like absolutely, that's that's crazy. That's insane. And they're saying that this man's the devil. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. But then you're saying that the white man is the devil, but so long as he ain't selling ketchup, you know what I'm saying? Like he could be that. But so long as he is supporting the movement, but he's not doing that because he believes in what they're doing. He's doing that because there's a such thing in political circles known as controlled opposition. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why if you can do the knowledge, they said Islam never killed nobody that wasn't melanated. 
if we yeah. really want to keep it real. That's true. Like they yeah. you, don't, you don't have no conversation. Double dipping as a middleman. Yeah, you ain't never you ain't never hear a nation of Islam, you know, killing the white people or whatever. But if I ask you, well, have you heard about them killing any black people? First thing that's gonna come to your mind is Malcolm X. Yep. And and let's keep it real. There's a of him, of El Haj Malik Shabazz El. Um, they lived a comfortable life in Jersey. You know what I'm saying? We're still going to mosques. Everybody knew that they was down with the hit and all of that. And mm-hmm. nobody exposed them. Nobody went to lock them up. Nobody went to exact revenge. Nobody. You understand? Hey, that's true, though. I I, did, I was reading about that. They didn't they do anything to They had a too. Netflix show on it. That's how, that's how public this it was. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole Netflix show on it where they showed the mosques. They showed the people. They showed the dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's why can't get no more mm-hmm. direct than that. I so seen you that too. Tell me that Netflix knew all these years, <laughs> and all these Negroes ain't know. No, they knew. They, knew. they ain't care. You know what I'm saying? Like Khalid but too. He, Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Or excuse me, El Hajj. You know what I'm saying? He was the martyr, but he also became the archetype because after oh, him, yeah. it seemed like everybody with consciousness came out of jail. Y'all ain't notice that? How come all of our leaders got to come out of the joint? How come all mm-hmm. our leaders, you know what I'm saying, got to come out of and make you And make you feel like they've been compromised, you know, that like, they've been offered an assignment. Brothers? That's what I'm saying. How mm-hmm. can all of these brothers Agents. coming out of jail have the same epiphany that, that El Hajj Malik Shabazz did and then was right. welcomed in the community and that, now they're kicking all of this knowledge to us and shit. And then we supposed to just be like word, you know what I mean? So in that, it accepted the idea that the real knowledge came to us through criminals. I, which then, i.e., perpetuates the idea that we're a criminal culture, mm-hmm. but we're not at all. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. We was never into like I when I was growing up, the criminals was into <laughs> making money. Mm-hmm. Now these criminals, they into it for likes and clout and shit. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, they when I was coming up, the people that was selling drugs, the people that was pimping hoes, the people that was doing all that type of stuff, they knew who was in their realm and who wasn't. Mm-hmm. So if they seen you trying to be out there and you wasn't from that realm, they would tell your mother. They would whip your behind. They would be mm-hmm. the one to be like, no, go to school. You ain't out here like this. This ain't for you. Like, that's the era we mm-hmm. came up. I came up in. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where, where the criminals had more moral conviction than the so-called squares did. Because most of the squares, the ones working for transit, the ones working for the government, the ones doing this, all them niggas are Freemasons. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All these niggas is, is is doing all types of stuff on Thursday nights and whatever, whatever, working to keep this system the way it is. Mm-hmm. Whereas at least these brothers was counterculture. They was they created their own economy. We created our own economy, but not every brother that was out there wanted to be a criminal. Like I could I could know the difference between somebody who was just in it for crime and somebody that was just that was in it because they were trying to feed their family and rise out of their situation. Like that, that there was a there was a difference back then. Now it's like they 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 don't they they don't want to do they doing crime to eventually get picked up in a Netflix special and have some, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> have some yeah. do a story on them or some shit. Like that's that's where they at with it now. So do you feel like we fund our own demise? Because I do, especially when I see people. And and it's no disrespect to sports fans or anything like that. But (laughs) some of these high price games and stuff like that, where y'all think that money go? That money go to the police, the same people that's shooting and killing people that look like us. Right. 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 However, when I step back now, like when I was in the street, right, and I was barely in it you know i was into stuff like 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 low level 
stuff like boosting polo like that type of stuff you know what i'm saying i'm into mm -hmm. that 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 type of like situation so mm -hmm. i'm really you know i'm coming from a middle class home like most of us i done came from a middle class home you know what i'm saying single mother you know the whole story but in that i didn't i knew more people deeply involved in the game than i was so i for whatever reason had a certain degree of discernment so I could see, like, like I knew, bless the dead, I had a friend named Raisin. Like, that was his name. His real name was Dion, but we called him Raisin, bless the dead. Everybody on FAP, Franklin Avenue Posse, I remember, uh, he got killed one day. And the way that it happened was, I remember coming, uh, coming from the train station and I'm walking around, right? And I saw him that day, that earlier that day. And I remember us talking or whatever, whatever. He had a blunt, so like we, we smoked a little blunt or whatever, was talking about a blah. And I was telling him, yo, I heard. Now, again, I'm not even heavy in the street, but I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how it was back then. You didn't even have to be in the street. You remember your grandmother mm -hmm. knew everything that was happening in the hood. She was never mm -hmm. outside. Still do. <laughs> My knew everything happening in the hood. Bless the dead. And she, that chick was never outside. The most she'd be on the stoop. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, I remember telling him, yo, I heard about you robbing these drug dealers or whatever. No, excuse me, it wasn't raising, it was my, my man Philip. And he was, and I'm what, five seven? Phil was like five, 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 six. And this nigga was robbing drug dealers. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Me and him went to the wow. same parochial school. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm talking to him, and he's trucked out. He's got the rock him cables. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's really, and he like maybe a, a, a year older than me. You dig? And I'm telling him, yo, I heard that you robbed such and such drug dealer, such and such thing. Yo, they, they really out here looking for you, fam. Like, it's not cool. Like, you really need to chill. And he like, yeah, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that night, this is Mother's Day night. That night, I remember where I lived at, it was a high rise. And he, mm. he used to be on the corner. Anybody know that grew up in Brooklyn on Franklin mm -hmm. Avenue, there was a there was a, a Chinese store right on the corner of Franklin and, and, and Bedford. And I remember being in my crib, being in my room, I lived at the top floor, so I could hear a lot of stuff happening you know, on the street. And I remember him crossing, the somebody say, yo, Phil, they called him. And then another brother that I knew named Demetrius was like, yo, don't go over there. They, they, that's them people. And before he could finish, you just hear, ah, mm. and then it's just quiet. So kind of find out Demetrius wound up being paralyzed mm. you know man, from the hit. And Phil just laid out dead. You know what I'm saying? So I remember going downstairs after the whole thing happened and me, uh, there was another brother named DJ Spinner. He he had a group called the Jig Masters. He, he used to throw a lot of, later on, he became real known for um, different rap groups, probably with the Maddox. And he uh, was also, um, he used to throw these monolithic Prince Michael Jackson parties. Anybody was in New York. During that time, you remember the Prince Michael Jackson parties was thing, but he would just spin different Prince and Michael Jackson songs all night. Long story short, he was there because I used to do demos with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the shit goes down. We all go outside and we all sitting there watching Phil just dead in the street, man. And back then they only had like one coroner thing for the whole city. So you had to wait. So we damn near waited all night sitting there talking about Phil. He laid out dead, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, this is Mother's Day, you dig? So I remember his mother coming out and it's almost like she already knew it was gonna happen. So she just kind of like did a little prayer over him or whatever and then went back inside. And then we just stayed out there all night waiting for the, what they used to call the meat wagon to come and pick up this brother that I remember going to school with. Like, I remember stealing his GI Joe <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember stealing his G.I. Joe in like fourth grade, acting like I ain't having this shit. And then <laughs> and then my mother 
bringing me to his mother in his house and making me return it and apologize for it and all of that. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So then like watching from that in fourth grade to now us in 11th grade and now he's literally dead, right? I'm just like bugging. That's when I realized like I got to make sure I do something else in life. I can't be out here as much as I'm out here doing little things like that. Like I'm not on this level of the game with it. I'm just ready to, you know what I'm saying? And from that point on, I realized that knowledge was a was a important part of manhood. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I re- cause like I said, I had just was talking to him. You know what I mean? And this is before knowledge itself. This is before the more me understanding the more science. This is before all that. This is just me, a regular dude in the street who thought he was going to be a rapper. You know what I mean? Of all of this, I'm talking to my man like, yo, this nigga, I'm hearing these niggas is really trying to come for you. Sound like you're doing too much. But he was doing a lot. Imagine being 15, 16, robbing drug dealers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. a quarter three quarters of your age like you know what i mean 45 35 year old people like eventually it's gonna catch up to you absolutely okay. but eventually like i said it really put me on a path of understanding like yo i got other things i could do like i, I could draw you know what i'm saying like i could rap i could write and it really gave me a uh a, a uh uh an inclination that i really need to figure out what i'm going to do with my life mm-hmm. because this shit is not promised like i was just talking to this brother you know what i'm saying and again i ain't special i'm pretty sure everybody that grew up in the hood got the same type of story with somebody that they know absolutely you know what i'm saying only difference is like i said what we don't realize is that what we saw as poor was actually middle class Yep. We actually was above the poverty line growing up. That's why we could have grandmothers and after school programs and all this type of stuff, whatever. They faced all of that shit out once we got old, our generation. <clears throat> Absolutely. So that's what I mean about knowledge. Like it it opened up, it really made me see how important knowledge itself really was and is and why. And what the difference between knowing and believing was or is. Because you know what you know. Mm-hmm. Like we're like this, like you don't believe in what you know because you know it. Because you know it. But whatever you don't know, you believe. Absolutely. Speaking of which, when did you first become conscious that you were indigenous or more? Was it through genealogy or was it just through studying? I had my one of my questions there excellent um my grandmother who is definitely indigenous to the americas just like her mother just like her mother just like her mother Mm -hmm. i was blessed to be able to know like the genealogy okay my great grand my mother was marcy my grandmother was dolores my great grandmother was edna my my great great grandmother was dear med my great 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 grandmother was this person. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was able to know a step down, at least through the lineage of the females in my family, you know? And so I was taught very young, you know, that they came up from Louisiana and, and all this other type of stuff. But somewhere along the line, somewhere between the time that Brent, uh, who was it? X Clan came out and poor righteous teachers somewhere around there i started real because x clan and them used to be in my hood like they used to like i used to see sugar shack and these people all the time that's back the rappers weren't scared to go where they came from right these (laughs) brothers was in the hood like you could say what you want about certain groups but these niggas these niggas was in the hood for real. <laughs> and I remember seeing Sugar Shack in them, Sugar Shaft in them with the black leather feathers and the beads and the, the staffs and the 40 below. Like it was a movement for real. That whole black white shit, that shit mm-hmm. was real. 
That was real. I was there for that. And that all happened in my little area. And they used to coordinate with one of the community organizers who was a brother named uh, Dr. Robert Green. And so I remember somewhere around then, I was really into the Pan-African thing. And so I remember going to my grandmother's house, right? And at the time, she was talking to this to this African who, who we used to call Uncle Badu, right? But he was an attache to the, the legation from the Gambia. But this was my grandmother's boyfriend right so i remember coming to the crib one time with a with, with the red black and green medallion and like the dashiki and all of that mm-hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> i came into the crib and he looked at me and he smiled and shit. so you know i'm i'm building i was talking to somebody i think my friend would you know i was talking to him and we were talking about like like africa and the culture and all of that and then he just came through. He had came out the kitchen from getting something to drink. And then like he stopped and looked at me. He took a drink. And he said, <laughs> you're not African. <laughs> I knew where this was going. <laughs> yo, my brother, like, yo, he told me, like, he just stopped, like, played me in front of the, the whole crew. Like, because we all, you know what I'm saying? We listening to X-Clan and pro- Poor Righteous Teachers and Brand Nubian and all, you know what I mean? Two Kings and a Sight. We listen to all this shit. This nigga stopped right in front of me. Now he an African. He got the he had a wife beat on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he just stopped. And he was kind of cockeyed and stuff, you know? So he kind of stopped and like and he would he would like turn like this so you could see the eye. So you know, just the eye he he looking at you with. Excuse me. And then they looked at me and was like, you know you're not African, right? He said, No, <laughs> I am African. He said, I am from the Gambia. You are not African. He said, Your grandmother. <laughs> is not from africa and i start going in on this thing like like you don't know what you're talking about now now look look at the arrogance i'm 16. you know what i'm saying i'm telling this thing from africa that i'm from there and he's like no you're not you're not you're not from there you have nothing to do with africa you need to learn who you are that's what he told me Mm. now look fast forward now I get knowledge of self through the 5%, mm-hmm. right? Start doing the knowledge to that, going crazy with that, right? Then somewhere around there, I get understanding of the Moors, right? But in mm-hmm. between that, I'm talking to my great-great-grandmother, Edna, bless the dead. She talking to me about how when she was a little girl, she used to go to different, like, um, different, um, towns and they would have whole festivals you know what i mean um where they would dress up in indigenous garb when she didn't use the word indigenous she would say indian she would would dress Mm -hmm. up in indian garb and all this other type of stuff whatever and all of that and so years later i get knowledge of self start doing the knowledge to it i get knowledge of the moors and all this other type of stuff because that came to me by way of another brother i knew an elder I knew, and um, I realized, wow, Uncle Badu was right. <laughs> I, he wasn't trying to diss me; like he was telling me the truth. He was letting me know, like, nah, this ain't your. You got a whole aspect of your culture here, and me as somebody from there, I'm letting you know that what you think you are is not true. You got to know what you are because what you what you think you are, you only believe you are, but you don't mm-hmm. know. Right. Once you know, you're not going to believe it no more. And that's exactly. what happened. And I think that that's where a lot of these arguments come from, where these people are not knowing who they are. They don't have their genealogy or whatever means they mm-hmm. have to no. know knowledge yourself. I think that they're just guessing and then somebody comes along. You ain't no more. You ain't no yeah. Indian. You ain't this. And then they get shaken up by it. But if you yeah. know, I mean, you're going to just be like, I don't give a damn what you think. Right. I don't care what right. you think you know. Right. What you're telling me, I believe I know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Because I've lived this life and I've seen it. And I've, re- you know what I'm saying, to that point. But like I said, me, even at that at that time, 
I still had no, no depth perception of how deep it actually really is when it comes to that and why we needed to believe we were from Africa and why we needed to always identify with not being from the place that we're born from. We're the only people in the world who were taught that the country that they were born into is not their country. You understand? Mm -hmm. Nobody else in the world goes through that but us. We're the only people. But at the same token, so they could look at you as an American, as a so-called American, more or whoever from America, and be like, oh, well, did you know that your ancestors really come from Africa, and you need to reconnect with them, this, this, and that. But these same people will see a, a Dravidian Indian that's way darker than me and won't tell him that. Mm -hmm. They won't tell him that his ancestors really come from Africa. They won't go to a dark-skinned in, in Indonesian person and say, do you know that you're really from Africa? You're not really from here? Even though you've been here for over 20 generations, you're really from somewhere else. The only people who that work on is people that look like us in this country. Why? Because we're the only ones out of the entire diaspora that were put in a position to have their culture and their nationality taken from them. Hold on one second. Somebody just asked, is that the correct email for the donations? I think tears is spelled wrong. Yeah. yeah. Tears is T-I-E-R-S. I'm sorry. I got it. I saw that. Yep, it's T-I-E-R-S, my bad. <laughs> we have a question from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Guy saying, find a... Negro Indian chief that identified as an indigenous Moor blanket statements. Rama Ramadan Ibn Wati, who was the last so-called uh, uh, chief of the so-called Anunawiya or the, the Chalal Kagi, who you call the Cherokee. Look him up. Ramadan Ibn Watali. That's his name. So mm -hmm. next question. <laughs> I, I like that. Well, you know, one thing Ramadan I would like to ask you, brother. Wati. <laughs> um, your name, what does your name mean? Asir, the Duke of Tears. Okay, Asir was the name that they gave prophets before modern times, right? Asir, gotcha. So that was given to me uh, based on uh, my, again, great great grandmother who uh, passed the day. You know, blessed dead, she passed. Uh, the Duke of Tears, that actually came from a uh, elder from the Ashanti kingdom. Her name was um, Empress Nkweke, blessed the dead. And when me and the queen got married, she consecrated, she married us. And she consecrated our titles within that. And then years later, um, when I started to realize, I was like, okay, tears meaning like levels, you know? Mm -hmm. So if it was to be translated, it would be a prophet of the different levels, you know, of whatever it is, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, whatever. But my real name, you know, born name is Prince Charles L. Rogers L. You know? That's dope. I like that. That's mm -hmm. dope. <laughs> to piggyback off what you were just saying about why we're the only ones that get caught, you know, in our own land that would you know you know what that means that would just mean that this is a status there you go there mm -hmm. you go there you go and that and that's the whole thing this is why they say moors can be white why because the term white in order for you to be white according to the law in the united states you got to send from one of the original peoples from north africa right. everything north of africa when they say north africa they really talk about north america because this is the extension of the Al Maghreb Al Aqsa, which was the Morocco of the farthest west that we read about when we research things like what they call Septetrinolius maps, maps of the extreme west. Mm -hmm. You understand? So Maghreb. that's us. It's just that they gave us a story and they gave people that look like us to perpetuate the story. So People will say, oh, well, we not Moors, but then it'd be like, oh, but we were Ethiopians. Like, what? Like, what do you, 
Like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, it's a pick and choose thing. Like, people pick and choose what they want to be identified as, as opposed to what they are. So they'll say, oh, well, I was a Moorish, but I was American Indian. But the oldest so-called American Indians on file that had dealings with the so-called European was called the Delaware Moors. <laughs> right? Right? So much so. Not only that, the colonizers that... The colonizers that came over said the first thing that they saw were those who wore like the turbans and yeah, the feathers, and the edges, skirts, right? and, um, and, you and know, dresses that, and, and things. Yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> and that know, they saw the, the mosque. They called themselves Muslims. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. The term Muslim, thank you for bringing that up. The term Muslim, this is why I say Moors, the word Muslim and Muslim is different. Even though Moors want to use them interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Most want to say, oh, they're really the same thing, whatever you want to say. But what I know is whenever I read stuff from Nobu Ali specifically, he never referred to us as Muslims. He only referred to us as Muslims. Why? Because there's a difference between a U and a, a O and a U. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, O come before you, right? It's A-E-I-O-U. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. last. So Muslim come to find out when you get a book called Ancient, ain't what is it called? Damn, if I remember the title of the book, I believe it's called uh, Ancient South West Indian Names or whatever. It's, it's that's I'll, on the, I'll, that's the PDF. You, I'll send you the joint on it. Okay. And the word Muslim is an old Delaware word. Now we know that they wasn't called the Delawares, right? But they were called the Moors for a reason. And the word Muslim was an old Delaware word. And the Delaware, going back to the Algonquin, existed centuries before the person that they called Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Arabia was born. So Absolutely. that means we was calling ourselves Muslims before the term Muslim even existed, before the religion of Islam even existed. I'm talking about the religion now, not the culture of our self law and master. Mm -hmm. right, you understand? That has always existed. I'm talking about the religion aspect coming that was adopted by the pale Arabs that we had to break away from and wind up going into Europe and get away from them niggas because them niggas was, was, was downstairs. They were still doing human sacrifices. They were still mm -hmm. castrating people and all that. So we separated from them. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is we was referring to stuff before these things even became a thing. So how you want to tie me to something that I exist before don't make sense. And like I said, you can check know. this out. I'll get the name of the book specifically. But in that book, it says Delaware had been here before that. You know what I'm saying? So we tend to go by what we've been convinced is true. Yet none of us were there. Right. right? So in essence, we are only putting together what it is we understand it to be or understand it to be or understand it to be based upon how we've been educated. So if you were educated to believe that only academia can give you the truth, then you really not educated at all. And that's where most of these people come from. That's why they want our people to go to Harvard and Yale and all this other type of shit. Right. Mm -hmm. And then while we're doing that, What's happening with the enemy? The enemy sending his children where? To Spelman, to to to, to more houses. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I don't understand the Harvard thing when the person that created Harvard enslaved Morris. He literally Thank says you. it. He Thank literally you. says just it. like Spelman is named after Rockefeller wife, Miss Spelman, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like they created a culture to negate the indigenous self-initiative culture that we already had here. They referred to the Algonquin, the Muscogee, the, the Panahasawa, the Pohatuan, the, the Ananowia, the, Tusc mm. the Tuscarora. They referred to all of them, right? The, the Creek, the Southern Creek, the Northern Creek, the uh, who? Um, who else? The, Cat the Catawba right? The Ojibwe, right? They refer to all of these nations as barbarous nations. Barbarous come from Barbary. Barbary. 
And Barbary come from Barbaria. And the original Barbarians were the people that they now are calling Tartarians, Tartarians. who were the Moors who set all of this thing up to begin with after the Millennial Kingdom and all that shit ended. So they got us hating on each other because a Caucasian, right, who reconstructed the history, put it in so that these people referred to Moors only came from a place called Spain. But you know what? There was no Spain in the seventh century. Exactly. <laughs> there was no Spain there was in no the fourteenth century. There was no Italy in the fourteenth century. There was no Italy in the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the twelfth, the thirteenth, the fourteenth. None of these places existed. There was no Italy. There was no Spain. There was no France. There were none of these places existed. So when you say that the Moors went up into Spain. And then from there took over all of Europe. What are you really telling me if there was no Spain? That, that stuff was here. See how that story just don't <laughs> add up? It don't add up at all. That that happened, that had to be here. So it's like Thank there was no you. Morocco back then. You know Thank what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Because again, there was no Spain in Europe. Because that's not even Europe. There is no Europe. <laughs> Europe doesn't exist. Exist at all. <laughs> you know what that is? That's West Asia. <laughs> That's West Asia. Yeah. You ever had somebody who you grew up with and then like they go through a, a stint or whatever and then they start getting some sort of success or whatever and then they start calling themselves something different? Yeah. <laughs> they start calling themselves mm -hmm. something different to act like they wasn't with the old shit that you knew that meant. That's them. That's them. They're no European. Yeah. European no Europe don't exist. Europa existed. Right? There was a lady named Europa. Absolutely. Who they named it after, but she was a melanated goddess person. Phoenician. Right. Phoenician goddess, right? Just like Dido, who helped set up ancient Carthage, which again was over here and over there. Because we forget that this whole thing was connected at one point. Right. And we could walk from Florida to Asia. We could walk from Asia to Florida. Like we could do that at one point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these people talking to us as, as if the continental trip drift that exists today is the same one that existed back then. And that's not true. None of that's true. These so-called Indian, the reason why the American Indians don't know nothing about the Moors or wink, wink, act like they don't is because the Moors occupied a degree in the band or the tribe or the clan referred to as the fire keepers. You had to be a part of the fire keepers to know the Moorish science and that in the Moorish ancestry and the true lineage of the tribe that you in. Mm -hmm. You had to be brought into that. If you wasn't, then you was just a basic member of the band or the clan or the so-called tribe. You see what I'm saying? Only the fire keepers knew the real science of it. And they kept that from the white man. These Westerns, I saw a Western the other day. I wish I could remember the name. And in that, they talk to the Indian. They talk to the Siberian looking Indian. And they ask the Indian, they say, yo, is one of the ancient greetings you guys had, assalamu alaikum? Mm. And the black Indian, right? The, the darker skinned Indian said he wouldn't know about that. This is a Western. I'm trying to find the name of the Western. If I find out, I'll definitely send it to you. But in the no. Western, they said that shit. So I was like, wow, these people really know. And they playing us. They really playing us. They really oh, yeah. make us hate ourselves. So They be trapping so, Jewish. Yeah, so they'll be like, oh, honor your American Indian ancestors, but your Moorish ancestors, that's a problem. Like, how are you mm -hmm. picking between your grandmother and your grandfather? How are you doing it? That's a lot of stuff you run into today with the genealogy. You Looking see, for one thing, find the other, and then get mad when you when you find the other. <laughs> no, it's it's hey, still true. who you are, so now you're mad at who you are. Come that's on. true. That's, we had a, we had an incident with that like that before because we do genealogy for people, and mm -hmm. one dude thought he was this particular type of tribe, but then found out that he was actually an African. 
and then uh, got mad and said, I'm uh, not claiming that. I'm like, bro, be who you are. So now you're dishonoring your ancestors. Uh, that's mm. what I'm saying. Everybody go back under their own vine and fig tree. Fig that's tree. what it's about. How you going to know who you are if you always trying to be somebody else? That's why they always bring the Africans over here to play us in these movies that make us look like animals and make us look like mm -hmm. criminals and make us look like rapists and whores and shit. Like everybody playing these roles, they not even America. 21 Savage ain't from America. He from Europe. <laughs> know what I'm saying? He ain't yep. from America. <laughs> Cool Herc wasn't from America. Ben Bottle wasn't from America. You understand? Half these niggas is from somewhere else. They not even from here. And they've been impersonating us to make us think that that's our culture. And it's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They yep. playing the same role that the white man playing. And it's worse because these niggas look like us, but they not us. Do you Half think it always been like that? Grow like American women here, bro. Like so called not. melanated black women hair grow over here. If original women over here was to just let their natural hair grow, just let it grow, you'd be putting these other women in these other countries to shame. The only ones that be having yeah. long hair in Africa be like the East, like the Ethiopians, mm -hmm. them, them type. Everybody else, they don't grow hair like y'all. Not at all. <laughs> That's why, why, where you think the micro braids and all that shit came from? We wasn't doing that over here. We had to do that. Because mm -hmm. we could grow hair. We could do that type of stuff here. Because that's in our genetics. That's why we not African. We different than them. We cousins. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we, we have relations. That's what I've been saying. I've been telling people that, I mean, it's the cousins. You got to, I mean, that's a deep, profound understanding of genetics there. You saying that. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Facts. But we're not the same people. We not. We not. Because if that's the case, then we were in that. But what you got over here is a bunch of melanated women following behind what they see other women doing, and you ain't got to do that. If you just let your hair be what it is, you will mm -hmm. be surprised how long it will grow. But as soon as in this country, they've been indoctrinated our sisters to believe that at a certain age, this is when you're supposed to get your perm. Somewhere between, what, 12 and 15? Somewhere around there, you destroy your hair, and then from that point on, it's a wrap. I heard you say somewhere before, you said that when they get this hair, they're getting it out of the sewer. They are getting it out of the sewer. That's, a, that's, uh, actually, that's, that's actually a good place they get it from. That's actually better. Most mm. of them is getting it from dead bodies. They are scalping cadavers. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? They are scalping dead bodies and grouping their hair together. Then you got the hair to get out the sewer. Then they got the plastic shit where it's not even hair. They got a they got a, a system. Where they get a comb and they get the 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 uh, plastic, and then they heat the plastic up, and then they get the comb, and then they dim the comb in, and it comes up. And every time it comes up, it's a different strand. Once they get enough strands, that's your wig. And this is what you're putting on your head. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the ones, the Indian ones, the Javidi, the 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 heavy racist ones, the Brahmin ones, where they where they make the little girl roll her hair down to the floor. And then at that age, they do the ritual where they shave the girl head. So now she's crying. You understand? She's grown this for herself. She thinks she's grown because they tell them that they're growing it for themselves. Mm. Then they lie yeah, to the they girl. They do it in a sacrifice. Yeah, then they, then they, then they boom. Then they take the, the rape. They, they literally are raping them. That's another form of rape. Mm -hmm. You're raping these little girls. They all of that energy, all of that fear, all of that, that self-emulation goes into the hair that you then, right, then they take the hair, then what they do, then they put it on the altar, then they put spells on the shit. You got, you this got niggas true. that worship Vishnu, that worship Krishna, that worship, that worship, um, um, Kali, and they put it on the hair as an altar for them. Then what do you do? You get it in a bundle, then you take it home, sew it into your head, then what? Then you go to church. All that then trauma. you go to a Christian <laughs> church, right? 
to get blessings when this shit is already you you a devotee of Kali now, Miss Johnson. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. <laughs> but you 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 in a, an agreement with Kali now. Hold on, wait, wait, one second. This guy said you need a book. Um, you have an app though, right? Yes, sir. You can go to uh Google Play or the Apple Store and download the A dot app. It's A D O T. Or just type in Asir or whatever on the app, and it'll be right there. You can download it. I got articles up there. I got all of the videos that they be banning on YouTube, that they be shadow banning me for and all of that. All of that's on there. I also have book lists on there. All of that. Uh, if you need books, though, like we can get into a book list uh, as we, you know, go through it. But, yeah, I got all that on there. But just the way it's, you ain't even you could Google this. This shit I'm saying, you could Google it. I have, and I I, I seen it. I'm like, oh man, that's. Then it's funny because after you said it, I googled it, I researched it, I went to the store, and I saw people with it in their head. I'm like, man, this is so crazy. This why I, this why you can't relate to these people no more, because they got straight demons in their head box, and then they trying to act like they going to think straight. Where you think the cancer coming from? Where you think the 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 dysentery, all this shit come from? Where you think the breast cancer, the the brain cancer? Where you think all this coming from? Then remember, then they put on external nails, so now they can't even touch themselves. Which means what? They not washing, right? They not washing they they self. They probably how can you? Mm-hmm. You can't even touch yourself. You can't put your hand through your hair. You can't touch your body. You can't do nothing, which is why they make everything external. <laughs> well, you got to go and have somebody do it for you because they feel that's some sort of success. Why? Because they've been watching Hollywood people for their whole life, getting their hair done and getting their nails done and their toes done mm-hmm. and, and they styling and they clothes. You've been conditioned and, and programmed. It's like, I don't want somebody in my body like that. I don't want somebody picking mm-hmm. out my clothes. I don't want some. I, I don't want. I'm a grown person. Why would I want somebody picking clothes out for me and I'm over ten? <laughs> like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You just creating. You just creating jobs to to give people money that don't deserve it. When you could just do it all yourself. That's the problem. Luxury dulls the edge of husbandry. That's an old Morris statement. Mm -hmm. which basically means that the more luxurious your situation is, the more you're going to be somebody who other people are not going to want to be around because you ain't got to do nothing. As hard as this world, as hard as it is to be a melanated male or female in this country, we got it better than everybody else on the planet. That's why I feel that a lot of them don't like us. Why do you think they all come here? To be with us. That's why they all come in here. We get chosen. When the last time you say, yo, you know what? I want to go to Africa. I don't need to go to Africa. Why? All the Africans here. (laughs) All the the Africans here. That's true. That's true. They all here. And they come here to impersonate me. Mm -hmm. But you telling me I come from y'all niggas. I ain't never want to go to your country and make a living and do something else. I ain't doing all of that. Because y'all niggas got y'all own country and y'all still messed up. <laughs> y'all still ain't got y'all shit together. Facts. Still. It's been six What is your view day. about what is your view about uh those who do say that we as a people are the original people here in America? And how does that pertain to um you know the Moorish belief system and things? Um because I, here at Peace Pipe TV, we do believe that we have all of these different backgrounds. We don't dismiss anything that we find in our genealogy and in our DNA. We don't dismiss any of that. We claim it and we we, right. we own it. You know, that's who we are. Um, we had a lot of uh, comments and questions about being indigenous here in America. And they like to say that we're not Moors. So what is your stance on that? What is your view of that? Being original to America. The reason why you have a problem with the people have a problem with the Moors diaspora is because of all of the Freemasons that have been infected, these so-called Aboriginal Indian, so-called Black Pan-African, 
so-called even moreish movements, man. That's really the issue. The issue is you have people impersonating us. Mm-hmm. And most people never even heard of the Moors until a certain time. And then when they say, oh, well, we wasn't Moors, we wasn't this, why? Who told you that? Why? Where did you hear that from? What book did you read to say that? Because that's not what Diop was saying. That's not what John Henry Clark was saying. That's what not, that's not what Ben Yokinen, Ben, uh, Dr. Ben was saying. That's not what uh, uh, Jose Pimenta Bay was saying. That's not what Churchwood was saying. That's not what Stan Lane Poole was saying. Uh, I could go on and on. The only people that have a problem with being Moors is Moors themselves because they have grown up believing that they're black, that they're Negro, that they're Indian, that they're in the Ethiopian, that they're African. So you mean to tell me you could be all of that, but you can't be Moorish? That should let you know that what they say, the hit dog holler. Absolutely. So you didn't, most of the, when I was first coming up in the Moors movement, you would be hard pressed to find information on Moors. They were still making it like Moors was Arabs and white people. Right? So I came up in the era of people, like I said, Hakeem Bay, Jose Pimenta Bay, um, C. Freeman L., um, uh, different so called Moors. You know what I mean? And again, this is post Noble Juali, right? Mm-hmm. So we're at a time frame where, let me make sure I got enough. Oh, damn. Gotta it's make sure up. I got enough. Juice. I said my lighting was dark. Enough. Yeah, right. Can you can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, we can see you good, bro. Okay, cool. Um I just want to make sure the phone don't go out. Because I got a thing on it. Uh I need to plug it in. I'll jump into that in a minute. Long story short is um the Moorish paradigm had to be erased and they had to get people to swear swear oaths and all of that uh to keep it secret. So by the time it became a real big thing, like most people would hear about Elijah Muhammad. They hear about Malcolm X. They will hear about Marcus Garvey. They will hear about uh, Wallace D. Farr. But you ask them about Noble Joe Ali, like, who's that? Why would they tell you about all these other people that were contemporary to this person, but not this person in particular? Because they don't want you to know that you actually not only have a nationality, but that nationality is tied to an inheritance that goes beyond what you even would perceive as an inheritance because it not only encompasses you as a Moorish American, but it, or a Moor specifically, it also encompasses you as a so-called American Indian because the American mm-hmm. Indians that they're referring to as American Indians themselves, like I said, were referred to and are the barbarous nations. And those barbarous nations have ancient connections back to the original aspect of the empire that was rocking everything from the time memorial up until now i just read a book on that too it's funny you say that say again i just uh wrote i I just read a book of what you just said yeah it's actually um well we we don't call them white we call them the nohulo in our language just out of the (laughs) you you feel me just like the africans calling them magunzas yeah (laughs) yeah or it's another word they call them uh what is it the um ah it's a yoruban word i can't think of the name right now um the ofe that too, but it's another one. Um, mm-hmm. I can't think of the name of it. It, it escaped me right now. It, it, it'll come to me though. Or the whites, the W I G H T whites. Yep. That one too. Yep. And then it was the, the Oyobo. Just there like you go, right there. Like hey, that's Africans, my sister. When they be trying to diss us, they be calling us Akata. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Call us Akatas, right? Which is which is what cotton picker. But that's because our Moorish people owned the cotton industry, just like we own the oil industry, just like we own all of this stuff prior to these people taking over and then putting us to sleep. But again, y'all, these people believe that these buildings and these mounds and these pyramids and shit, these shit was here, that there wasn't no, as much as these people talk about, oh, we, we was indigenous of Moors and this, this and that, who built the Cahokia mounds then? Who built all of these mounds? 
if y'all American Indians, right? If you was American Indians, then you know how to build them today. How come y'all ain't building them since today? And exactly. The, and, and exactly. Because the you don't know how they did. It. The natives said that they didn't build them. The Moors do right. that. Right. <laughs> Ask the Moors how they build a pyramid. We know. We know all of that. Why? Because we're the ones who get this stuff thrown at us because we're the ones that never laid down with Rome. We're the ones that would have rather died. We'd rather die than be down with some with some sellout ass nigga or 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 a dirty more or something like that. We went to war with our own people to stop them from incarnating these soulless beings. That's how much we didn't want to be down with this present paradigm. That's why they hate us. That's why they got to dress like us. That's why every Shriner, when he wears a fez, he got a, he got a Moorish name or Moorish something on it. It'll it's say Islam or al Arabi or Muslim or whatever. Because the more name on it represent the person who owns the person wearing the fez, the marked up fez. That's the difference. The so we have a question here. The problems about being a more was melanated people. I'd have mm -hmm. been all over the world just like this as a more all over. Who has That's actually one of my questions too, but I'm going to let her go first. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to um, just address the Brother Fabian's um, question here. Did the American Moors basically travel in ancient times and teach various other civilizations such as Egypt? Yes. <clears throat> yes. That's exactly what we did. There's a book you can get called The Algonquin Conquest of the Mediterranean from 11,500 B.C. Get that book written by a dude named Samuel Pope. And it lets you know that we went and colonized the rest of the world that was already in darkness. Because there's been epochs in time when different elements or different types of beings was ruling here. But this whole place was set up for our people. By our people, I'm talking about man and woman. Before everybody else, it was us. And within right. that, we had a... a, a a certain sphere of influence that represented the entire world. And thus they have been trying to create a world where that influence no longer has sway. And so they buried the Moorish empire in secret because the Moorish empire is tied into what they refer to as the millennial empire. And they don't want to get into that because then that ties us up with the whole Yeshua coming and all of that type of stuff. They don't want to deal with none of that. So they want to go along with the Freemasonic lie that all of that shit is still yet to come. And all that shit already happened. Mm -hmm. So Facts. here we are now. We are our ancestors return. And they still got us waiting for somebody else to come get us out of a situation that we could get out of our damn selves if we just accepted who we are. That we, we do it to ourselves. Yeah. We, we got are like our a, enemy. We a, didn't exactly. fall to no Caucasian people. Wasn't no Caucasian people in power to the point to take us out. It was people that looked like us that used them in a proxy war against us. Just like Stephen and Django. Stephen was signing the checks. Stephen owned the plantation. Stephen was employing the white people to brutalize the other melanated people. Carl Candy was the slave. Carl Candy was the buck dancer. But to the society, it looked the opposite, right? Exactly. Exactly. When you go, okay, you said you've been around the world in the same headdress, and and obviously, I know you wear fez too. Yeah, I've right. worn fez you. like this. I've worn the fez with the turban. I've worn the the whole burnous with the fez and the the, the old Moroccan looking joint. I've even worn the straight native headdress out. I remember planes. that. <laughs> I, you did a video like that. Yeah, I remember well, that. I got videos of me getting on planes like this. <laughs> what, like, their, what is their reaction to you? It's always been positive. <laughs> I've never had no issue. The one time I had an issue, and who was it with? 
It was with a Negro. It was with a Negro in TSA. And this Negro told me, oh, well, you got to take that hat off. When I looked at the nigga, I looked at him and I looked down at his ring. I seen the I seen the 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 joint. I seen the um compass of square. I looked at him, I said, you know you I said, I know you know better. You know what you know what this is. Don't try to turn this into something else for your ego. This how so me and, and I'm talking to him in front of his superiors and everybody else. But we having a whole different conversation. And I'm telling this nigga, I said, I know you're trying to show out for these people, but don't play yourself, man. I'm not taking it off. So what are we going to do? He's like, well, we got to go in the back. We got to pat you down and this, this, and that. I said, okay, we could do that. But instead of you, I'm going to have him do it. The white man. Oh, you should have saw this nigga face. He was like, oh. So I bring the, so we go in the back. The white man. Oh, he gave me so much respect. He said, sir, I'm not even going to touch your crown. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to just lightly pat it. You can put your hand here, and I'm going to pat it on top of your hand. Like, he was the most <laughs> respectful. And the whole time, I'm sitting there talking about, you know, I really, really respect you. Like, like where are you from? Where are your people from? He's like, oh, well, you know, I'm from, from Poland. I said, oh, you're from Polonia. And he looked at me. He was like, wow, I haven't heard. The only person I've heard referred to as Polonia was like my great great grandmother. I was like, yeah, because she was probably in the empire. You know, we was looking out for them back in the days. We had to protect them from the brigands and the dirty Moors and the dirty Freemasons. And I'm and I'm saying this and I'm looking at the black man. I'm telling, I'm talking to him, but I'm directing it to this Negro. And this Negro is sitting there the whole time just heated. Cause I ain't never take it off. <laughs> His whole situation was to get me to take it off. So I said, no, you know what? Come with me in the room and I'm going to show you how it's really supposed to be done. Because this white man is going to give me the respect that you know you're supposed to give me. But you're not going to give it to me because you're a dirty Negro. <laughs> and you're upset that I'm here in habit and I can wear what I'm wearing freely when you can only be outside one day a year like this. Mm. And then so you got to wear a damn apron because you ashamed of your manhood. Because when we marched the devil across the hot Arabian desert, once he reached the ends of the caves of West Asia, he ripped off his apron and went up into the caves like an animal. Hmm. So y'all niggas wear aprons. Really, what you're saying is that your penis is small. <laughs> that ain't me. I ain't make it up. That's what it's based on. That's the rituals. That's the original. Because the moors was riding. So when they ask you, was you walking or was you riding? You better say you was riding. Because we was the ones on the camels. We was the ones on the horses walking these niggas into the abyss. We did that. We don't ride goats. We don't do none of this crazy stuff that these, but we don't, we don't make oaths to dead spirits and all of that. And just because I want to put a Morris face on it, that I'm somehow doing something different. No. You yeah, their information, the they, stole. Dead ritual. they stole their information from us. I mean, you have the she or, you know, the so-called Mayans, they're doing yep. a lot of their handshakes in stone. All of it. Everything these people are doing today is based on us. That's that's just what it is. That's why we're the most dejected. That's why everybody got a nation and everything on earth except us. Because everybody has been living off our inheritance since we went dormant and forgot who we are, who we were. That, that ain't... That's just what it is. Then they created a death cult to make sure we never remember. Ain't no white man forcing these Negroes to do that. They doing it because they want to do it. Mm -hmm. They doing it because they like this world. They like working with the devil. They like the situation that they in having to be an archon for him or her. Mm -hmm. And acting like they got, they holding the tail of the elephant. And then trying to convince us they got their arm around the whole thing. They don't. They just as lost, if not more lost. And the white, like I said, the white man would rather be around people like us that don't want to have nothing to do with them. Right. Exactly. Any one of them. And we and we chose to integrate. Well, we didn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some well, of our Michael, people Michael did. did. Yeah, some of our people <laughs> did. And then what it did was it created indemnity and in, in, in enmity amongst each other because half of the family 
was now against it and half of the family was with it. And then they came together. You see what I'm saying? You think that's an issue and a problem that we have now? Stemming yes. from all of that? Yes, but it also created a subculture in mm -hmm. which all of us that were against it, it that created a way in, in each of our families in which now we were born at a time where we started to go against what we've seen the bullshit in the family being. That's why when they mm -hmm. say that you're the black sheep of the family and all of that, it's mm -hmm. usually the one with the most knowledge of self and the most history on the family is the black sheep. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cause because I'm like that in my family. <laughs> who and same who are the truth and the falsehood strangely mixed that come together and then decide what side we're going to be on. Mm -hmm. So we decided we're going to be on the side of truth. Not the side of the Moors, not the side of the American Indians, not the side of the Africans, not the side of the humans or the, the truth. And thus, that's what makes us a problem for the rest of the family, because the rest of the family is about getting money. Mm -hmm. Or maintaining the status quo based upon those people in the family who have agreed to keep the generational curses going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. So what do you have? Um... What do you have going on as of now? Um, I know you have some projects that you've worked on before. Um, what, what kind of things are you working on now that you're getting ready to give to the people? Um, one, thank you for asking. One is uh, I am have a, God damn, I got to get a charger real quick before this thing go out. Um, one, I have the Darsco 418. I'm going to have this directly uh, available for people. It's a cold color version. It's like a textbook. I realized that I could write history books and stuff like that, but it would be better integrated if people learn it the way they learn it from other stuff like movies, entertainment. So I condensed mm -hmm. it all into a, into a nice entertaining type book that even though it looked big, it's a heavy, real quick read. And in that it has a lot of references and stuff like that, that you can get into uh, that, uh, going on today uh, because I've been shadow banned on YouTube for since I started the page like I've been on YouTube since 2008 and they have me capped at almost they don't they have me capped at like 50,000 but mm. I know I have reached way beyond that because other people in other countries tell me when they look at my subscribe numbers it's almost in the hundred thousand yet when I look at my page you see what I'm saying so and they they like they're trying to perpetually demonetize me. So they mm -hmm. want to make money off of what I'm doing, but, but not pay me. So in that, what I decided to do was establish the ADOT app, my own app where people can go on and I can start dumping all of my direct information and stuff like that. And at your leisure, you can start to go through it. You can contact me through it and stuff like that. So this way, again, I can get out of this dead end relationship with YouTube and these people because they're not going to let my chase, my page and everything like that grow. And um, so, yeah, I've been working on that as well as uh, Cordova Organics. That's the Queens uh, lotion company and all of that. All of these different companies have parabens and horrible ingredients in their, in their products. Everything that we do is 100% natural. It's not water-based. It don't have nothing in it. And I really watched her build it up. So I've been, working to support that as well as um working with as many indigenous and moorish groups as possible to strive to get rid of a lot of the confusion and a lot of the the political infighting that really doesn't exist because people don't realize like your tribal name is a con connected to your imperial name so if you look at the moorish empire as an as an imperium and then and then your tribal or your tribe nation as the nation, they work in tandem. So if your name was John Smith Bay, you would be John of the Ananawea Smith of the Moorish Empire of the Moorish clan or Moorish tribe of Bay. You see, they work in tandem. But once they got rid of the Moorish paradigm, at least on a, on a direct physical, they created a stance where now they had to use their tribal names as their national name. You see, and thus the international side, the, the overall overarching side of their dominion was now cut off from them. 
and then they were then isolated. And this is how the United States was able to establish the coup d'etat of 1871 through the Organic Act of Congress that then ushered in the era of the Ku Klux Klan, as well as the era of the usurpation of all of the republic to try to convert it into a democracy. That's what we all need to remember as well, whether you're more, whether it is, America is founded as a republic because that's what our Moorish forefathers established it to be. And in a republic, the individual rights is above the rights of the mob. That's why whenever they, somebody says, oh, well, this is democracy, correct them. No, it's not. It's a republic. This is not a democracy. This is a constitutional republic. That's why they say for, um, I never memorized that little thing where they say uh, for the republic for which it stands. Yes, for the republic for which it stands. One nation. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the problem. They don't, they, they want to make us believe it's something that it isn't. You understand? Democratic Party, again, all of that is foreign. That's all Roman based. That's the Romans trying to come into this thing now and redistribute it again. We can't let them do it. So it don't matter who's in the office. Whoever's in office, it don't matter. We don't have to be down with their government to be, uh, uh, to, to have it represent our interests in certain instance, in certain instances. We're supposed to have our own stuff. While within our own stuff, we also have a Republican form of government that could do other things for us because that's what we're guaranteed. We're guaranteed that in this country. That's why we're not communists. That's why we're not Marxists. That's why we're not any of these ists. All of that is fake shit. All of that's fake. You know what I'm saying? Yes. United States of America and General Congress assembled. That's the real name of the country. If we was to take it before that, it would be the Almaricanos Estados, the free and the the ancient and free of Moorish America, the Moorish estates. So we we have a precedent here. Before that, we, we could adjacent to that is the Maghreb Al Aqsa. You see what I'm saying? Like we we have so many different names. The Berber name for America is Amaruka. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like. We are what our ancestors were today. And just because I'm a Moor doesn't necessarily mean I'm not Ananawea or I'm not uh, uh, Pahatuan or, or Maya. All of that contributes to who we are. It's not like when you declare your Moor, your Moorish American or your Moorish nationality, you cease being any of this other stuff, including right. African. It's just that's not the paramount of your identity. Mm -hmm. So stop trying to be somebody else. Stop trying right. to disrespect one ancestor over the other. So you'll be, you'll be, you'll be this, you'll be that, but you won't be a more. Why? Mm -hmm. And they can't even really give you a real answer. One of the new things that got out now, some, some Egyptian dude put out a book called more means dead. Ah, uh, I seen that. I seen yeah. that. So I read it. I went through it, peeped it. And I'm like, why people think that the word more is so what because this egyptian dude then decided or they did his research say this is what it is in his tongue that that's what it mean in every other tongue and even though it do let's say okay let's take what this egyptian dude say is true as if it is that what does that say about moro kush wasn't they egyptians mm -hmm. <laughs> so they dead too right but like you know what i'll even accept it yes so more do mean dead. Then what? What is that? that mean? What? Basically, I'm, I'm, we're, we're in the underworld. No, what that means is that I right. am and Moors like me are the lords of the dead because we the ones that resurrected ourselves from mental death and power. We okay. the ones who yeah. represent the Moorish, because to more means to anchor, means to means to hold, right? So that means who's holding this place together? Yes. The dead Moors, right? Who spoke the dead language Latin? That, Latin. that who? The dead, the dead crackers is using right now to control all you niggas. So what are you saying? So in that, I'd rather be one of the dead who has resurrected themselves from mental death and power to the point now where I rule the necropolis. I rule these dead niggas. You right. <laughs> you right. What else you got? What else you got to to make me? doubt myself you're not gonna do it 
you can't do it. What the do word you mean? also means means fertile and expansive land. So they even named the land after us. And I'm supposed to take that as a slight? No, nigga, you got to do more to insult me. You got to find <laughs> something else. You got to find something else because you can't. Because you cannot rip apart what Allah has brought to the people. And it was our people, the Moorish people, that brought humanity, man and woman, out of the darkness. It was our people that ushered in the millennial kingdom of the person they call Yeshua to be able to raise the vibration of all of the planet Earth. We did that. So how was we bringing everybody out of the dark ages into the light while at the same time enslaving them? Ex explain that to me. You know what they say? Oh, well, the Moors, they the ones who taught the Europeans, blah, blah, blah. Yes. We had to teach them Europeans because you niggas was just as dirty, if not dirtier than them. So we decided to use a certain portion of them to keep what it is we could preserve on, on fleet because we couldn't trust it with our own people. Mm -hmm. How is that different from what's going on today? Most of the people who, the first person I ever, who ever called me a nigga, the first person who, who I ever heard use the term bitch to describe another female was a melanated person. <laughs> it wasn't no cracker. No. So what why do you think say? that is so much um, disagreements in our community? Like, why do you think people are saying that, you know, they, they go at Moors, they go at, you know, in Indians, whatever. Why do you think there's so much confusion? Because they don't want to get right. They don't want to accept nothing. See, when you ex see, I accept what happened. I accept Moors. I accept Nation of Gods and Earths. I accept Hebrews. I accept Hindu. I accept whatever you say you are. Because no matter what you say you are, it ain't going to turn me off of what I am. So I'm going to always be able to build with you on any level because that's what Moors do. Because the word more means to have what? More. <laughs> right? I ain't never seen a more who wanted less. So in that, like I said, when it comes to the Moors as a people, as a diaspora, there are more of us than less of us. Yet those of us that have issues with it are usually those of us that have been taught the opposite of who they are. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be less, if you want to be a Negro, if you want to be whatever these people call you, I as a more respect your freedom so much that I will, I will support you in being a slave to these nations if that's what you want to do. That's how much I love freedom. I love freedom to the point that if you choose that your freedom comes from you being a slave, I support you in that. You see, that type of love that type of indifference, they don't they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to accept that. They because all of these niggas want to be included. They want to be loved. They want to have somebody in that. But a more mean love. So if I'm a more, what's the very first premise of the Moorish thing? Love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, equality. So you mean to tell me you against that? Because if you say you don't like Moors, you're saying you against that. So if you are against love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality, I don't have nothing to do with you no way. <laughs> what, how do you feel about this comment right here? Um, Shamisha says, indigenous Americans kicked Moors out of the Americas. And ever since then. Prove it. The I say prove it. Then why am I here? <laughs> how am I here? You're going to kick them all out. How am I here? How did Prophet Noble Ali was here? He was here before all of us. He was here when we was literally dead. And he was able to resurrect the Moorish people to the point that they had more businesses than blacks, more, more access to the ancient world than the present blacks that was around them, to the point where they had to send boule niggas in there to shut the whole temple down and make you forget that Moors even existed. You don't know what you're talking about. Why well, I'm still here then. The fact I'm here, shut your whole argument down. Next question. <laughs> I think we I do want to open the floor for anybody. If you have questions, go ahead and drop them in Any the comments here. We'll read here. them and put them on the screen. Um, now let is your me, time. Um, 
Let me run and get a charger real quick, okay? I don't want the phone oh, no to doubt, die. No okay. No doubt. All right. So you guys, um, thank you guys for tuning in and everything. You guys head over to the brothers' uh, platforms here. I'm going to put them up on the screen. Go ahead and support Asir, the Duke of Tears. No doubt. These different websites here. Also get that um, A dot app, Google Play, and the App Store. We also have um, some information here if you guys would like to donate to him. Um, his PayPal email donations is Duke of Tears at gmail.com. His cash app is dollar sign DS418. If you are willing to support the brother, don't forget also you can follow uh, Peace Pipe TV on Facebook. We thank you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing here on YouTube. Thank you for following us, uh, myself, Miko Wolf on um, Facebook and TikTok, as well as myself. Phoenix Nadi also on Facebook and TikTok. Um, if you guys would like any of our services, we offer genealogy. You can always email us for any of these, but genealogy trust service to help you set up your trust, secure your bloodline. Um, we have um, exit uh, child support services just to help the brothers and sisters out there who are faced with paying child support and you know want to change that narrative in their life. We also do um, DNA hard um, data reviews, not necessarily analysis, but reviews. We'll look at your DNA and gain some understanding as to exactly where um, you fall in line with that information. Um, it ties well with genealogy. So if you're able to get both services, I would most definitely, definitely recommend that. Absolutely. Because our team has been hot now. We didn't Got what, like five people? We already found their ancestry quick, fast, in a hurry. We're about to post some um, testimonies here shortly. So you guys, definitely that genealogy service, that is like A1. Like we have people over here who are certified doing this. You know, all of our services are A1. You know, it's we got to come together, y'all. Yep, we do. Absolutely. All of the set tripping is what got us in a position where we think that one group is better than the other. You never heard me say once in anything I've done that the Moors were better than anybody else. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're at a time where we come from a people who were systematically erased from history. And that erasure came at the same time that the one that they refer to as Yeshua and all of that also came back or whatever and established a millennial reign within that time period. So while they got all these Christians waiting for some other shit to happen that don't already happen, we don't already established all of that. That already came and went and they made you forget it. And in order to keep you from forgetting it, they had to get rid of the people who were there who helped maintain that reign and ushered all of that in. Those were the Moors. Whenever you see images of Moors, what you see? You see them looking like this. When you see images of, of Yeshua and these people, what you see? You see a dude with a beard, right? With the white burnous and all of that. How is it that all of the Moors was dressing that way? For just for no reason, right? We just was... We just was, we, we were just doing that for no reason, just because we liked it, right? No, because we are the people <laughs> of the house that they refer to as the Bay of Il in, in uh, the Quran. And we were, or are the people who were infused to protect all of the people that came later. There's a book you can get called Time Walker. Get that book. I got book. that book. Yeah. You talking that. about uh, it's the Code of Time Walker? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That book's yeah. dope. Great book. All about the Moorish Empire, right? All about it, right? And its connection to the so-called American Indian. The niggas want to be Indians, but guess what? You calling it Indian, you're going along with what the cracker call it. Because everybody who call itself Indian, you're supposed to be referring to yourself as Indus. Because that's where Indian come from. Indian comes from Indus and the Harappan Indus culture, 
right, that they saying that you was allegedly connected to, this was the culture that is tied up into the Far East, Buddha and all them niggas, right? Buddha came from the Harappan Indus culture. But the term Indian came after the fall of the empire, after the stronghold of Granada got shut down in which they started to refer to the land that they were taking over as Los Indios, which means mm -hmm. those outside of the God they worship, which was the beast that had just been let out of the what they called the bottomless pit. Mm. And thus, those of us that were not worshiping that beast were seen as being idolaters because we were still functioning from the perspective of the the kingdom that we help usher in on earth as it is in heaven. And thus, we were not down with the new shit they was trying to do. Because their, their Christ is the devil. <laughs> right? Mm. The beast. And so we wasn't with that. We wouldn't convert to that. So you had to kill us. That's where the Reconquista came from. That's mm. where the Renaissance came from. Who was fighting against that? It wasn't the Indians. Who was fighting against that? The Moors was. That's where the Barbary Wars started. We was the one fighting to protect the Ananawea and the Cherokee and the rest of these people. We was doing that. We was enslaving millions of so-called Circassian, Caucasian Christians just coming out the fucking cave. We was the one doing that. To stop them from coming over here with dogs of war to, to rape and kill y'all. We did that. Would that be why they was calling us pirates when they was on the Mediterranean? Yes. Burberry yes. War. Because we was taking back the shit that they stole from us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why everybody hated the Spanish. Because the Spanish were literally illiterate dogs. They didn't have no knowledge. Their whole diet was based on pork. Because these are the niggas that came in after. So we... So the kingdom is reigning. We done created a whole utopia, a whole paradise through the whole world. Will we change the diet of the whole world? We change the education system of the entire world. Don't the, didn't they say that about the Moors? They said that the Moors mm -hmm. are the ones that brought everybody out the dark ages, right? The dark ages. I'm just about to ask you about the dark ages. Yeah, this is the dark ages I'm talking about, but it was dark to them. It wasn't mm -hmm. dark to us because we was the darkies running it. We was the ones running it. And this was also the millennial kingdom or the reign of who they call the Yeshua, who y'all call Jesus today. He manifested 70 AD. So from 70 AD, to 14, or I would say 492, we ushered in what they refer to as the Dark Ages. Who they say was ruling in Dark Ages? The Moors, right? <laughs> what they said, right? So that means that we correspond and we correlate to the time that this person, who they call Yeshua, ushered in the new kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. It says it in their Bible. That's why part of me is thinking, well, who the hell are we? Because if all this shit already happened, right, we must be the remnant. Like, where are we in the story? Because all of that Bible stuff, all of that was already specifically for the people of those ages. And that time has come and gone. We are in the aftermath. Like I said, we are in the era of the Terminator. In the beginning, the Terminator with the with the Terminators walking in the in the destruction, right? With, and stepping on the skulls and all that shit. Like that's the era we in now. We in the Escape from New York era. We in the Total Recall era. This is where we at. We not even in the Matrix. The Matrix is old school shit. That ain't nothing. <laughs> we we in the real bottomless pit now. We in it. And what they're doing is they're trying to terraform this world into hell. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to turn our physical world into the hell realm because they know they done duped these niggas to believe that they were grass-wearing Indians, right? <laughs> this is what these niggas believe. These niggas believe that they was walking around here in grass skirts and shit and feathers in their head and didn't have no beef. She was all cool 
And then one day the cracker came and then it was just over. When in actuality, these same American Indians that these niggas want to be so much, that y'all love so much, read about the French and Indian Wars. Read about the war between the Tuscarora and the Catawba. Read about the war between the Pahatuan and the Iroquois and the Algonquin. These Moors were slaughtering each other before the white man got here. So what y'all say about that? That's the Moors' fault too, right? That's us too. We're really, this was us. This is what we going through now is what we always been going through. We got it twisted. We're trying to look at this world through, through rose colored glasses and it's not the way it is. What's really going on is they done made you hate one side of your family and then big up the other side. Yeah. When you need both sides, you need both hands to feed yourself. Like right now, I could walk on my hands, right, up and down the street. But Allah gave me legs for that. <clears throat> so why I'm going to do it the hard way? Why well, I'm going to look at every other melanated person as an enemy to me because they refer to themselves as Moors. But this nigga calling himself an Ethiopian, he cool. This nigga calling himself a Yoruban, he cool. These niggas are doing straight sacrifices to shit. And y'all cool with that. But I call myself a Moor, or, or, or I agree, or I acknowledge the proper noble jolly. Now, somehow or another, I cease being all of that other shit. It's like y'all picking and choosing. That's that's what I don't like about so-called black people. They be picking and choosing who is dope, who not dope. What I like about this one, this one ain't good. This one is cool. I'm going to be a Moor. I'm not a Moor, but I'm an Indian, right? But I'm also not an African, but, you know, I like eating jollof rice. Like, get it together, bro. Get it together, There's a bro. question here. There's a question here. Why do you wear a fez? What does a fez represent? The fez, right, represents the extension. Well, it depends on who you talking to, right? The ancient story of the fez was that at one point they was all white right hmm, i know where you're going they were all white now at one point during the time of a people they called the phygrians p h p h y g r i a n s the phygrians had what they call the phygrian helmet which we would call the fez today another name for the fez is the mitre M-I-T-R-E, right? The Mitre. This is what you hear the, the Catholics, priests wear. You know when you see them Catholic priests and they be in all red and they be having like the red low fezes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Epis they call them the Episcopal, the Episcopal C. The name that the Episcopal C is called amongst their own people is the Moors. Mm. Right? So whenever you see them niggas in the red fences, they calling themselves Moors, M-A-U-R-S, okay? Because they're impersonating us. So the Phygrian helmet or the Phygrian cap was there, and it represents also what they call the liberty cap, the cap of liberty, because it was a sign of extreme freedom. That was over here. All over the world. Mm -hmm. All over the world. Go and pull up the coat of arms of Barbados or the mm. coat of arms of Costa Rica or the mm. coat of arms of any South American Sogo culture. You're going to see at the very top, they have what they call a finial. The finial is the spear. And then on top of the spear, you're going to see a red cap. That's the fez because that's the sign of liberty and freedom. Okay. So that is above the entire thing. So the story was the Moor who was wearing the white fez from ancient times, he had been captured. And the king that put him in bondage told him he need to take off that fez or take off the midday or whatever. And he would not do it because he would not break his faith. And so what happened was they struck the Moor, right? And his blood, when they hit his head, the fez came off and all the blood soaked the white fez and turned it red. And from then, 
that fez was then taken as a symbol of freedom right and the 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 rebellion against tyranny and then that became what they call the 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 Phrygian cap and then that's when it became a symbol of liberty all over the world from the shores of montezuma to the whole from the whole of montezuma to the shores of tripoli we took this shit all over the world and freed the entire world from the bondage of rome that's what we did we did that not the cherokee not the <laughs> not the creek not the mayans not none of them the people who they refer to as the moors so you're welcome <laughs> we did that and we helped free everybody to the point that freedom became the basis of civilization from that point on all the way up to the point where they caught the nazarene yeshua and then they put him up right and they killed him and then allegedly he dies 33 a.d right so from 33 whatever the, the date was he allegedly dies and what they say three days later he resurrect right this is if you this is if we're taking the allegory let's take the allegorical story of this as an aspect of a historical record okay for those that don't believe in anything that's not written down in a book by some other man okay so this happens so you can say it was fake you can say it never happened or whatever but for some reason these niggas created a dating system that was before this person and then after this person but during this so-called period now right where this thing happens we get the rise of nero we get the destruction of mount we get the destruction of mount vesuvius we get the destruction of rome in toto wherever romans was at they got shut all the way down 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 to the point that they did not exist anymore you understand and from that era now by the seventh century we get the rise of who the moors the moors and what are they dressed like what do they look like they look just like this nigga yeshua look at a picture i'm not talking about the white yeshua but even then look at the clothes the white yeshua got on right then look at the clothes of all of the black stuff that you'll see in from the russian iconography and the the uh the old amharic iconography the old ethiopian iconography of yeshua and what you're gonna see you're gonna see niggas dressed just like this with feathers on and turbans on with beards in all white right with flaming swords right shut in rome all the way yeah. down and you had a whole century of these people <laughs> and during this century what do we, during this time what do we get these colossal buildings that we can't explain all of this other stuff that we can't explain but what we also get at this time is the destruction of all of these ancient so-called cities that we see in the grand canyon all of that that looked like they was just literally melted right this is why because we brought the technology we are the ones that were in glorified <laughs> or we were the divine ones that came and helped usher in this era and like all things it was great but eventually it fell and in 1492 what happened which is really 492 because remember they added a thousand uh, years mm -hmm. to give themselves yeah. more time mm -hmm. so it's really 492 it fell just but like with that after, guy uh Scalia. thank you yes mm -hmm. yes yes so we get the fall of krypton basically right mm -hmm. and then what happens now we get the rise of the beast we get the devil being loose from the pit, right? We get this giant mud flood. We get this all of this mud all over the place, burying everything, right? So obviously something was coming out the ground all over the world, but ain't nobody talk about it, right? We can see the actual demarcation and, and water marks and, and mud marks on the buildings today. We see them today, right? There's a whole strata that they refer to as black mantle, right? But what it is, is heavily charged, ionically, electronically charged energy 
that hit a certain point and it just liquefied everything. And then what happened? They start repopulating the earth now with all of these abominations, right? And then we're now, at this time now, we're basically mentally dead. We're me mentally dead because now we done passed through that photon energy. So now it's a mass amnesiatic thing happening all over the world where people like us are just not in a proper mind to the point where we're almost like infants. And so what happens? The devil then comes and takes control. And then he tells these niggas, hey, we got you from Africa. We're going to put you on these plantations, all these old houses that your ancestors used. We're taking them over now, and you're going to live on them as our slaves. And niggas are so downstairs, they like, okay, boss. <laughs> and they do it. <laughs> look at Django. When you look at the movie Django, where was the slaves in chains? When you look at these movies with these slaves, and they was on the plantations, where was the chains at? You don't see them. No. You had slaves just walking around. Right, just walking around the plantation, doing the shit they wanted to do, until the master called them, and then they gotta come and do what he wanted to do, right? Because these niggas is mentally dead, just like our people today, mentally dead, to the point where hey. you might as well be walking around zombies. It's right? funny you say that because when I do genealogy, I see a lot of people who were enslaved, but it was just them owning their family. There you go. That's, That's all how it worked. You got the dirty maw in the family who was now down with the beast and the beast system. And he became the, 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 the guarantor for the rest of the family that he had now enslaved. And then he agreed to bring in these Caucasians to act as his management team. And now they could brutalize his people for him without him having to do nothing. He could just act like a slave. Right. But what is he doing? He's signing the checks. He owns the property, just like the movie, because that's what happened. That's what happened. We wasn't enslaved. We wasn't taken over. None of that happened. These buildings, these temples, these pyramids, this shit was already here for thousands and upon thousands of years. And these niggas just came one day when we lost sight of what it was and then just put their name on it. That's why the builders say founded in 1873. Founded don't mean created. Founded right. don't mean built. Founded don't mean erected. Mm -hmm. It means literally that they found it. <laughs> they walked in and found it and said, yo, this going to be the post office. This going <laughs> to be the library. Yeah. This going to be the, 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 the state building. This is what they did. Yeah. They tell you that they framed the Constitution, didn't they? They said that they were the framers of the Constitution. So you know what that means? They literally took the document, put it in a frame, put their names on the frame. Now they did it. <laughs> this Constitution was written by all black people, all melanated Moorish people. George Washington's father was a French Huguenot Moor named Nicholas Maritou. Look it up. He's darker than me. <laughs> but when you think French, you think white. When you white think people. Belgian, you think white. When you think English, you think white. But that's only been like it's, that since 1900. Why? It's interesting, too, because... I'm sorry, even in genealogy, you have those um, those predominant last names of like Williams, um, Jones, things like that. And you, when you look in that up and you, you run across Scots, that last name being Scots and certain clans like Clan Campbell and things like that, you got to understand that a lot of those families, those clans, those tribes started out as darker, you know, as as, as you, you know what I mean? Or, or even, you know, my complexion, Miko. Mm -hmm. They were all melanated, dark-skinned people all until 1900. That's when it all switched up. That's when they got rid of all of the melanated descendants of the Bromaldi people. See, they talk about, mm -hmm. they'll talk to you about shit, but won't tell you about shit. So the ancient Europeans, the melanated ones, we could trace them back to people that they refer to as the Grimaldi, right? Mm -hmm. That's Napoleon and them people from. Napoleon was a melanated man. 
Why you think him and Tucson had so much beef? Because they was two melanated people. But he was from France. He was from Haiti, right? But they was a part of the same language stock. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why they was could able. That's why whenever you see pictures of Toussaint Leoverture, he always got an admiral uniform on. Why would a slave wear an admiral uniform? Because he had a navy. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about an empire that was fracturing and Napoleon was hooking up with the czarist people who were working to destroy what was left of the new Federation of Muscovy, which was the old Tartarian Empire here in America, whose flag was red, white and blue. See, this is the shit we don't hear about. We don't hear none of this. Because we are still taking their word for history as fact and they're a liar. Think about it. Every, I don't really even think we can really encompass what I'm saying. Everything these people have ever told you since you could hear and listen to someone talk has been a lie. They are not gonna tell you the truth about one thing and lie about the other. They are gonna lie about all of it. So if you picking and choosing which truth you're going to accept between the lie, they got you. That means if you're doing that, you're a part of them. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you picking and choosing, you cherry picking, okay, I like Ethiopians, but I don't like Moors. I like Indians, but I don't like Moroccans. I like this. You are the problem. You're down with them if you're doing that. <laughs> you understand? Confusion. You're down. Oh, this, this lady, it's two questions I see in here that are so dope to me. Mm -hmm. First, I want to go to this one. This lady says, um, Miss Anderson, she says, what name should we unite under? You shouldn't unite under your family name, first of all. So whatever your family name is. See, now, me saying all of this about Moors, right, and being a Moor, don't mean that I don't know that a lot of these Moors is crazy. <laughs> you understand? Like, I'm not on a breast of how wild some of these Moors is out here being right now. I don't want you to misconstrue that I'm co-signing every Moor on the planet. That's not what I'm doing. The Moors I'm talking about are the ones who strive to be that despite all of the bullshit that we've been in. That we have that have been put on moors, that have been put on so-called American Indians, indigenous people, whatever. The Prophet Noble Jew Ali was the first person, was the first being in modern times to say that when the European got here, he found moors living up and down the Mississippi River. So what is he saying? He's saying that the moors is indigenous to America. Who was saying that before him? I'll wait. Nobody, because Garvey, who was working with, with William Kleckler and the American Colonialization Society, these was the niggas that was trying to get you to go back to Africa. But when Noble Jew Ali came, he knew that that wasn't the case. But what did he do? He didn't come and shit on Marcus Garvey. He didn't say, to, yo, don't listen to Marcus Garvey. He didn't know what he was talking about. He was full of shit. He was this and that. He didn't say that. What he did was he stand, he stood on business. He said, you are not. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. He has left the building. Uh, sir. I think he might have dropped. He did say something about needing to charge his device. Mm hmm. Mm. I think he really got the charger. It might have been like something with his internet we'll give him some time but other than that does anybody have any questions i thank you all for tuning in it's a bunch of people in here i i, de I definitely mm -hmm. thank y'all i mean it's a saturday i probably ain't got nowhere to go if you're on the east coast midwest it's snowed out there so you ain't got nothing better to do but hang out with your folks right here <laughs> Hila jones you said that they were dark scott scottish people the thing is is initially they were scots not Scottish. Scottish 
where those who came in mixed in and are a fairer skin tone or white folks or whatever that took on those names and that culture and that heritage, um, those would be the Scottish people. But those who are original, again, they were the Scots or the Brits or, um, you know, we, we don't like to put that ish on the end of those. Let me see what else I saw here. What well, ish just means Charlie says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Charlotte. It shows. I wanted to show that other guy's yeah. comment. He said we were Moors. He had the uh, family um, heirloom or something like the that. The heirloom. Yeah, I think he said he's, he emailed you. Okay, after the show, I'll, um, I got a brother right there. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can you see me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can y'all see me? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you mm-hmm. hear us? Yes, I can see you. Can you see me as well? Yeah, we can see, see you. Okay, great. Okay, I was just making sure. My bad. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I got the charger, so we okay. Okay, cool. Well, this um, guy right here, he says, now, you were speaking to Noble Drew Ali. I know that Noble Drew Ali said that um, he's going to make the Europeans tell the truth, correct? Yes. This guy right here, uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, man. I apologize if I'm not. I'm known to butcher people's names. But Billy Madison or something like that, Madison, he says, Blacks are more as I have an heirloom to prove it. Yes. Thank you, brother. Hold on to that. Because they trying to they trying to box us out the game. They're trying to make our people hate us the same way they try to do at the fall of the, of the at the fall of Granada. Like we don't understand when they talk about this last stronghold and all of that. What's up, Z? What's up? I spoke to her. Yeah. Tomorrow I said she wanted. Okay. Yeah, I just spoke on the phone. Thank you, son. Uh yeah, that's the that's the whole thing. They created a a thing. And when the stronghold fell, that's what led to what they refer to as the fall of man. Because now this is the era in which the beast nations were able to rise and all of the dirty ones that was working in tandem to help them do it were able to then establish dominion. And then from that dominion, like I said, let's say from 492, so from 70 AD to 492, right? This is now the the what they what the Christians and what these other people call in the millennial reign, but that's the reign of the Moorish Empire, right? Then let's say from 492 to about 1555, that's now the Reconquista. This is the Inquisition. This is when they now trying to kill as many of us who remember what actually just happened, right? They getting rid of us. Then from 1555 to about 1619, this is now them establishing a whole new paradigm system by using people that look like us to help usher in this thing and make us forget that the kingdom was actually really on earth, right? Then from 1619 to 1776, we now get the reestablishment. This is those of us that are still remembering what's going on, working within the fictitious system that exists to help establish things like a, a, a Articles of Confederation, Article of Association, which led to the, the uh, Constitution, right? Then from, let's say, 1776 to about 1800 now. This is now when the empire is striking back. We're now using the Barbary Wars. We're doing everything we can to try to hold on. But the more we're doing that, the more third density we're becoming, the less spiritual we're becoming, the more technologically advanced we're becoming, but through conventional warfare, not spiritual expansion, right? So then from that point now, let's say from 1776 to 1800, then from 1800 to about 1812, right? We get the New Madrid earthquake. That's the second upheaval. This is what creates the lex, the last of what you call the mud floods, right? So from 1812 then, to 1865 this is us fighting against everything else that happened but now we've lost right then from 1865 to 1871 we get the coup d'etat this is now when they take over everything through this rome again because this is all rome we fighting rome now takes advantage takes over control right and now they usher in the new situation so that way from the end of the, uh, let's say 1871 to 1900, then we get the orphan trains, the cabbage patch kids, the clones, 
the human incubator babies, all of that shit, right? Up until now 1900. And then what happens when we are literally mentally gone? Who comes in 1912, 1913? Here come Noble Juali reminding us again, <laughs> reminding us once again who we are. So much so that between 1913 and 1928, he has an empire of temples that span the entire country. So what do they do? They send the dirty moors in. They send the same infected Freemasons in, shut him down between 28, and then reorganize everything in the so-called Morris Science Temple from 1928 to 1938. Then by 1938, the new organization of Moors come in, and now it's okay to be a Freemason in this shit. You see what I'm saying? Now it's okay to be involved with all of this other bullshit, right? So then, boom, what happens between this period, though? The destruction of the United States. It gets taken over. By who? By Rome. The same bankers, the same people we've been talking about. They take it over. So that way, between 1933 and 1945, what happens? Another world war where they use what's left, the remnants that was left in Europa, the remnants that was left in Asia, the ones that was left in, in um, so-called Central America, all of that. They wipe them out and then start to influx that area with more Caucasian people mm. and then force all of the melanated people that's there to the back of the bus again. And now mm. they become second class citizens in the countries that they actually were from and founded. And mm. then here we are. And here we are. Here we Damn are. Here you we know are. what? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> With that being said, bro, we're going to come to a close here. Mm -hmm. um, really, really appreciate all the knowledge and wisdom that you have given us tonight. Really, really, <laughs> really good, good stuff. Absolutely. Um, you always kill it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Most you definitely. I do want to thank everybody for coming out watching. Please be of support to our brother Sir here. Um, go to his websites that he has here. He has gunroad.com forward slash Sear the Duke of Tears. Yep. Um, he has a lot of good information. Um, a lot of good information. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Please. Cordoba, check the is that how you say that? It. Cordoba. Yep. Cordoba. Cordoba Organics. Organics. Mm -hmm. dot com. Yep. We also, he, he also has, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, also, like I said, on YouTube, you can check me out on YouTube. They got me on a heavy shadow ban. So uh, if you can make sure you check your notifications, make sure you still uh, subscribe and all that, that'd be dope. Also, um, like I said, if you go to the Google Play Store, Apple Play Store, the A dot app is up there. Uh, I'm starting to funnel all of my stuff electrically through that. Like I said, I'm going to have the book up there soon for everybody to, to get it's a great read it's a little adult so but there's sections of it that you can read with the children and all of that but it's definitely a great gift and stuff like that for people just getting into consciousness who don't necessarily always want to read history books and all of that to get into it sometimes it works better when you have mm -hmm. a story or something that you can follow through an entertainment thing a lot of it lasts longer oh i'm definitely about to call mine Definitely. Indeed. I appreciate it, man. And Absolutely, man. We got to support each other, man. We have to support you. Yeah. Like we us. all we got. We all we got. And the time has come now. Like I said, I wonder, now that all of this stuff has happened, like who we really are, not who we are, we know who we are, but how, well, I would say, however, all of this is going to congeal into moving us into a higher octave. And I believe, excuse me, I know it's going to come from the remnant, which is all of us, whether you call yourself a Moor or an American Indian or an indigenous or, or Hebrew, whatever it is, all of us have a piece of this to contribute to the greater whole that allows us to manifest and resurrect ourselves as a people because there may not be a resurrection from physical death anymore, but there's definitely a resurrection from mental death and power. And if we are now in a position where we are the ones who understand what happened, like we're talking about what happened to us, as much as people want to want to want to supposition and try to guess and try to come up with all of these stories, like I'm talking to you based upon all of my years, my 50 years on Earth and what I've put it together to me. And thus far, 
in all of it, the one through line has been us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those first in time, first in line. So regardless to what you want to call yourself or be or identify with, don't disavow your brother or your sister because they may necessarily be of another nation. If they have the earnest within them to learn and all of that, it's our responsibility to bring them up to speed so that way we all could be singing at least a variation of the same song. So that way when the shit actually goes down, we actually have a plan to deal with. But it's not going to come if we constantly talk about who's this and who's better and who's worse and who. Because in the end, the adversaries see us all the same. You know I was just about to say that. Yeah. So that's that's really the best we can do, man. Which is the best we can, you know. Absolutely. Indeed. All right. So again, we thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you. We're going to get back in contact with you and maybe bring you back another time. This was a Let's wonderful build. Um, do it. Maybe you have anything else you want to say? I just want to thank him for coming out. I want y'all to really support this brother. A lot of knowledge. He dropped a lot of jewels on here. I see people in the comment section that like it. I see thank people. Um, I just got a couple emails of people that like it. So they said they're going to go to your site. That's great. That's great. I really appreciate the support, guys. Because like I said, if it wasn't for the people, uh, I wouldn't be in this position. And like I said, I got here by not participating in all of the destruction that you saw happening with the conscious community and all of these different debates and all of these different characters that's being brought up to keep us disunified, man. I'm with doing anything to put the empire back in position within reason. So you don't got to be a more, you don't got to be a, a he, you don't got to be anything other than yourself for us to be able to commune and make certain shit happen. Because in the end, we are all seen through the same eyes as the adversary. And the adversary don't give a damn what we are, because in the end, he already know it's us. So we have to take responsibility for what we lost and actually strive to create something better for ourselves and our children. That's all we got left, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. With that, we say whatever the greeting is: Hotep, Islam, Osio, right? Ali Khan, Ali Khan, right? Bahá'u <laughs> like all of it, like all of the languages. We say right. and, and and gratis. Pax et amor, uh, in ruina Roma mortis maximus, which means. At the fall of Rome, the Moors will become the best or the Moors will become the top. So when I say Moors, I'm talking about everybody. Whether you refer to yourself as that or not, if you melanated and you have a certain degree of understanding, I see you as my brother or my sister until you tell me opposite. You know, and let's take it like that. It's long. It's With that long. being said, you all have a, a wonderful night and we'll see you at the next show. We have another uh, treat for y'all next show as well. <laughs> Yes, Shippi Shalash Peace, everyone. Shukran. I really appreciate you guys having me on, man. It's a great platform, and this is what we need to see. Original man, original woman together, because that's the only hope we have is us doing it together in love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality, man. We cannot help lift up fallen humanity if we're on the floor with them. So somebody got to stand up to help pick up the next person. So, inshallah, Let's try to make that be us, you know? Absolutely. Peace, everyone. Love. Peace.